100% digital television station. Hot 7 TV. The opinions expressed on this TV program by the hosts, guests, and callers are solely their opinions and responsibility. They do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Hot 7 TV or its affiliates. Well, good night, folks. Good night, and welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real. No, I am not late. It's actually exactly 8.30. Good night, folks, and good night to all of you. I, this guy said the bow tie was straight, but I don't know, man. Gotta get a discount around here, you know, with all of these snafus. But good night to everyone. Thank you for joining. I have to say, of course, before I get in trouble with the fans, I have to say special good night to all those in St. Lucia. Well, I'll start with the diaspora tonight. Woodbridge, Ontario in Canada. Good night to you. I got my message. I'll be locked in. In fact, just six minutes ago, locked in. Woodbridge, Ontario, Canada. Good night to you. Good night to Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Those of you all over the diaspora, I better shout them out too. In Atlanta, Georgia, New York City, Boston, Massachusetts, Hartford, Connecticut, Miami, Florida, Houston, Texas, L.A. On the West Coast in California, all over the U.S. of A. Raleigh. Yeah, we got somebody over there in Raleigh. Raleigh. Well, and of course, St. Lucia, somebody says, looks handsome as usual. Thank you very much. St. Lucia, I met somebody in the uh, supermarket yesterday, or was it day before, and we had an extensive conversation about what the government's doing and how they like the show. Of course, you know they like the show, keep it real. And they made me out from behind my mask, and I'm always amazed. I don't know how clear this HD is. Good night, Opicon. Good night to you out there in Opicon. But it seems like people make out, you know, the eyes. You know, hazel brown eyes, you know. Good night to you. Good night to all of you in Monier. That's right. That's where she's from, Monier. Good night to Bocage, Entrepot, Independent City, Bagatelle, Tupa, Tu Messier. What? La Pance, New Village, Chaussee Road. Good night to Lafayette. Good night to Moshi. Good night to Denry, the Mabuya Valley. Mabuya. Good night in Viewfort in... Uh, you and Nora Heights, good night, honey. That's what I see. Woo, honey. Good night to Pave Road. Good night to the Mon. Good night to the fans up there in um, Capitol Hill. That's what they call it. Good night, Monier. Yes, good night to you too. Good night to Souffre. Good night to Salty Bush, Choiselle, Canaries, Flora Villa, Ancillary, Market Street in Ancillary. Good night to you. Good night by the square. All. Keeping It Real Village is ancillary. When Keeping It Real is on, I must let you know, everything stops in ancillary. Good night to all the fans in ancillary. Thank you so much for watching. Castries, Capestit, Groselé, Bonte, Monchi. Did I say Monchi already? Mongiro, Bois de Wange, Tupa, Tuambala, Maricel, Grand Rivier, all around St. Lucia. You have a viewing party at Plant. Good night to everybody at Plant. Thank you for tuning in. Rich Four in Denry, Denry Village. Where else? Denier Rivier, Larry Seuss, Gadette. Bonsoir. Miku. Bon yes, I better not forget. But tonight is going to be hot. You're going to have some extra time to call in tonight, folks. Some extra time. I hope you fed well, you cleared your drains and the heavy rains yesterday afternoon into last night and this morning did not affect you too much. Yeah, gotta keep things a little lubricated eh? Because it's going to be 
one hell of a time tonight. Now, folks, I want you to know that in all the research, Kabish Babono is in the house. Good night to you. All high, yes. Can't forget that one. Good night to La Talk Road and good night to Ciceron. Before I get in trouble, you know what I'm talking about. So, something has happened in the course of the past few days. And St. Lucia has been a buzz. There's been a lot of talk about it. A lot of people said, I told you so. But let's get to a video clip I have for you. We're going to roll the show off with that. And it starts, you ready for me? It starts at the heart of the matter. Roll it. At the heart of the matter are the majority of the Labour constituents who having chosen their preferred candidate as a legitimate precursor to the party's candidate selection process were disrespected. Any imposition by leadership of a candidate arising out of a rigged, manipulated and contaminated selection process is simply unacceptable. Most of the Labour supporters in the constituency have rejected the party's decision, which they rightly deem an assault on their freedom of choice and expression, an affront on fairness, due process and justice. Okay, that's good enough the there. Solution that's good enough there. That's good enough there. Folks, some of you may be wondering why I want to delve in it. But this, is, this show is called Keeping It Real. And I keep it real with you. And there's a reason for this. This is the hot story. It's the hot story, folks. It is the hot story. And here we have Dr. Alfonso St. Rose, who we know all so very well. Oh my God, people are dying. Remember that? It's been a staple on this show. People are dying. And Dr. Alfonso St. Rose was what? The president or whatever. He was some big cheese at the SLMDA, St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. And for quite some time now, people have been saying that Dr. St. Rose seems to be acting very political with his statements and what was going on in St. Lucia since elections, where there was a lot of noise about St. Jude's Hospital. And when he was asked about him having been so silent about St. Jude's during the previous administration, I think his statement, or somebody else who was with him, the, the statement was that they were working in the background. And now that Alan Shastney and the UWP was in office, they suddenly got into the foreground Interestingly. But it seems like these days there's a lot of row row where it comes to the selections that the SLP has been making. And it seems like persons who were interested and thought that they had a fairly good chance of representing were sidelined. At least that's what was said. That's what I gather from it. And there just seems to be a constant brouhaha that people are talking about all the place because people talk to me about it too. And I'm from the north, so Grosile is my constituency. And of course, there was the selection of Bebe and a whole lot of things. And we heard about a certain person was soon after at Rodney Bay Marina and there was this meeting with a number of talking heads from Grosley wanting the other candidate who's referred to as Skinny. Sorry, I don't remember his name right now. But I'm sure you know who I mean. And they wanted to put a petition. Problems there. 
Then we had Sufre announce Emma Hippolyte. And then Dr. Lendo was so bent out of shape. I mean, he was making a lot of the noises with Dr. King. I mean, uh, Dr. St. Rose. And he felt that selecting Emma Hippolyte was taking things away from the youth and people who were capable and bringing back the old guard of people who were, you know, no longer useful. That's my word. That's the impression you got from his statement. So, Abala uni roro tu. Ek apweza anshuaze un pli roro. So there's a lot of things going on. And then now, last week, I asked a number of questions to the leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierre. And up to this day, he has not responded. He has not responded. I asked him about the Jufali situation, that he has been making lots of noise about transparency and accountability. And being the leader of the opposition and having declared that the campaign was on, and he pumped the air, you know, the campaign is on, let the campaign begin. I want to ask him again, leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierre, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied that you have conducted your due diligence into that matter and satisfied that everything is above board, that there are no improprieties, that you are confident with all those involved to make your way forward as the leader. You are no longer the deputy. You can't hide behind the coattails of Dr. Kenny Anthony. You cannot claim, that I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You can't claim that. You're the one front and center. So you can't claim ignorance. It is your responsibility. It is your duty to find out what went on. And recently, an affidavit was filed in the courts. Maybe the reason why you're being silent up to now is because you're conducting an in-depth investigation into this whole situation. And it was Dr. Ernest Hilaire two weeks ago, or this just about, who went to the media again, made a statement about the vehicle. He's the one who brought up the specter of a joint account with Dr. Jufali. I spoke about it last week. And he said the account is being audited. Which account? Since you brought it up, might as well be forthcoming with the information. How much money was in that account with Jufali? How much did he put in it? What was the money for? Who were the signatories to that account? Philip J.P., are you hearing the questions? Who were the signatories? What was the money supposed to go for? When was that account created? In which bank was that account created? I don't know. You never said anything the same way. You have that video from last week on the market steps with the keys. Yes, see if you can get that for me. Let me know when it's ready. Because Ernest Hiller seems to be the one who constantly brings these stories to the public first. And everybody's like, wow. So he's taking Duvan. I don't know why, but he's putting those things out there which are not necessarily full public knowledge. So you're left to wonder, what is the motive? What is the reason behind that? And just as you did then, and in the House of Assembly, eh, come and get it. I left a good paying job to get paid less. That's what he said. That's what he said. And I worked there, and I worked there, and I worked this place. And you think, a man like me who's been working so long in all these apparently well-paying jobs, the Masa Ashte and Motoka. Masa Ashte and Motoka. 
I asked Dr. Onesile a number of questions. In whose name was the vehicle purchased? In the United Kingdom, in London. Easy to answer. You should know. You said you send the money to Tafawa. In whose name was the vehicle purchased? The paperwork that was filled out in the UK, in whose name? The same vehicle that you were referring to on the market steps. Drop it for him. I left my job to take a pay cut to be high commissioner. And I said to them, if it's your vehicle, come for it. There is the victim. Come for it. You see that? Come for it, man. Vinny. Who say nom? Zot say nom. Vinny Puli. I also asked, in whose name, in whose name was the vehicle imported into St. Lucia? I also asked, in whose name is that vehicle registered in St. Lucia? I also asked, in what year and under which administration did the investigation into that vehicle begin? Simple questions that you can easily answer. Upa bizwe avoka pusa. And I will ask a further question tonight. I will ask a further question on this matter. How is it that a case, an investigation into this whole situation, has not been, after what, four and a half years, almost five years, been completed that the complete set of documents have not been furnished to the customs department is that the case dr hilly and why is it taking so long you're an elected representative of the people and according to your leader of the opposition who is striving who insists that you yourself talk about transparency and accountability as a public figure as an elected official in St. Lucia, you should be forthcoming with those statements. Everything's above board, isn't it? If I buy groceries at the supermarket, I don't need an avocado to say I bought groceries or to tell me you don't need to say that. Everything's above board. Yesterday, I bought eight yogurts at the supermarket. I don't need an avocado to say that. I can tell you that, folks. I also bought dishwashing liquid. Uh, yes, I did. I also bought a roll, which I recommend that you buy. A Viva. That's the best paper towels you can find. It's almost like cloth. It doesn't disintegrate that easily. And you don't feel as if it's, you know, nothing. You can use it again and again. I don't need an avocado to say that. I don't need to be mysterious. I don't need to be nebulous. I don't need to, you know, pale or talk. Well, I, 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 bought, I, I, I bought some yogurt. I bought yogurt. I bought paper towel. I bought dishwashing liquid. I don't need to do that. I can come out and say it. So as a citizen of St. Lucia, with elected officials who one of them is pushing himself, wants to run this country, I don't know how, and the other wants to continue in office, I need answers! Dang, damn it! No grand charge. Stop the grand charge, man. Answer. Answer my questions. As a citizen of St. Lucia, I am sufficiently curious about the half statements that Ernest Ile has made in public in the House of Assembly on the Castries Market Steps that have piqued my interest and I want to know about that Range Rover. I've heard enough about it. I want to know about it. If you want to put yourself up for elected office again, I want to know that you are completely above board. And you cannot ignore it. And that is that for now. So moving right along and quickly, let's get on to the next 
pertinent matter. And tonight, folks, you're going to have your opportunity to call. Oh, yeah. You're going to call tonight. You know, sometimes you have to go back or to the past in order to analyze, to conduct your own analysis of the paralysis, like I always say here, and see the pattern of behavior or, or verify or question the veracity of statements made by people. some reason, well clearly, there are some people who don't want to talk about the past. Man, that's the past, man, that's the past, man. Forget about that, that's the past. Because when you go into the past, you will see the things that they did and the inconsistencies from what they did to what they're saying now. You see? To what they're saying. So I want to go back just about June the 14th. Remember that fateful Sunday, the motorcade that flopped. You remember that, of course. Oh, it played out all over social media. People were talking about it all over the place. All before people were making their statements online and inviting all kinds of people. There was an invitation for Philip J. Pierre, for Ernest E. Le, for Kenny Anthony to join me in front. Lead the charge. I lead the charge. Shuval. Inviting them. But your foot on souffle. Mm-hmm. In true SLP fashion. Bah! Your pas fini. Your pièce. But the supposed come on. If we come on, we don't say this. Uh, but I want you to watch a video from back then. And people who said that they didn't know anything and nothing was planned and all that. We know it was planned. In my opinion, it was planned. I saw the videos. I saw the invitations. I saw, I heard all the buzz and everything. And it's the same faces, you know. The usual suspects. Look that up. Before you all say, I say so. The usual suspects. Look up the meaning of the expression, the usual suspects, the usual suspects, the hacker locks, the hacks, hacks. Same faces. So you left to wonder, am, am I seeing, am I imagining things? Am I seeing double? Uh, you know? So, let's hear what a certain individual who you will know by the time you finish listening. Let's hear what he had to say by the Castries market. Roll it. Tell everybody, tell everybody, those who have vehicles, just make sure we drive very slowly to be reached by the, by the Gapa Poa show. Everybody just line up behind and we go in for our drive. Once we get out of town, everything will take place. Those who, those who need buses, buses, as soon as, as soon as, yeah, the buses are by that. No, the buses are by that. Okay, the buses are coming. Okay. So why they stop the music? We have to be fair. The police are telling us how to do it because they have to do their job. So they're telling us how we can do it in smart. All we have to do is just do our thing in smart. You see, I'm not speaking on the speaker there. Tell everybody what I'm telling you. Same speak. Okay? Because basically, once they, once you go out and we start making a big thing of it, then they come to arrest each of us. Kind of a thing. But once we, we, go, in once we go in smart, we go in smart. If that's not a plan, then I don't know what the meaning of the word plan is. I mean, you, eva like I say to you, I provide you the evidence and you come to your own conclusion about that evidence. So fast forward almost two months to last Sunday, the 16th of August, and early in the morning from Casabar Beach, live on Facebook, Roll it. Yeah, today, I hope will be a good Sunday. We buy Marjorie's. We're hoping that people will come to patronize. Come and spend the day on the beach with your fellow St. Lucians. We're not protesting. We're not having
having a rally. We're not protesting. We're not having a rally. We're not protesting. We're not having a rally. Make sure that everybody knows that from today, this is going to be Marjorie's Beach, and all St. Lucians will reclaim their birthright. What? Can you play the last five seconds of that for me, please? And all St. Lucians will reclaim their birthright. What? All s Listen well. Anglais c'est un bail où ça est dangereux, hein? là où pas ça bien parler, il ne peut pas comprendre ça ou qu'a dit. And that all St. Lucians will listen well, reclaim their birthright. So, I would suppose that Christopher Hunt there is talking about the beach. And he says, reclaim. So if you're going to reclaim something, it means that it was lost. And he says it's your birthright. So which beach was lost? That's what I, I saw all of them on the beach. I see them on Ridwee Beach. I see them on Vigi Beach. I see them down by Coconut Bay. I see them on Sandy Beach and Chasne. So what was lost? Which beach was lost? that needed to be reclaimed. Now, I showed you that clip because to, to, to juxtasup, juxta, juxtapose or to compare it to what he said just two months ago about the motorcade that was planned and today now, well, on Sunday, he's saying, well, we're not here to demonstrate and all of this thing and you know, we just had to support Marjorie, and then he talks about to reclaim. So how are you going to reclaim that? Well, we're not protesting or anything. But let's roll the other video. <laughs> going to protest nothing at all people from all over you know you're not protesting you come to support you come to buy you come to donate to Marjorie where the placards came from they just mag magically they just magically washed ashore all the euros and the US dollars a few weeks. Did y'all guy get guys get any you got money on Casaba Beach? You never told me about that, you know. You spent it all already. <laughs> Folks, it seems like those placards just magically washed ashore. Just like all that money, all the euros and the US dollars that washed ashore on Casaba Beach. Recently, people were fishing for money. Or those placards fell out of the sky. Or everybody there ch chanting, Shasta must go. Was kind of some hymn for a church procession or something.
They're all there for money. They're all concerned about the environment. You have people talking about the same suspects again, the usual suspects, talking about archaeological finds, talking about the environment. I didn't see one darn garbage bag over there. I didn't see one rake. Nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't see that. Nobody came by to clean up the beach. You're all so concerned about the environment. Nobody raked up. In fact, they left garbage on the beach. Oh, yeah. And what was the crowd numbers there? What, what do you think? Huh? Garbage, that's what they left behind. Garbage. But you see, <clears throat> the people of St. Lucia are not blind, you know. The people of St. Lucia are not as ignorant as some people believe that they could give them that old Kool-Aid. Glug, 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 glug. To drink. Mal mene de sevel. This is the farce, the insult to the intelligence of St. Lucians that we have been witnessing since elections in 2016. June the 6th. Chagouin pouvoir. But we'll take a break. And we'll come back. We'll come back, folks. We'll come back to this cabot thing because I want you to talk to me about that. And I'm going to open up the lines for you. But we'll take our first break and come back with some more eye-opening information about cabot. Back after the break. Avoid the congestion and traffic associated with Cashew City and Rodney Bay Shopping and come to Gamewoods Mall. We have everything you'd possibly want, from a sprawling supermarket to a complete furniture store. From your choice of elegant boutiques to professional photography, dry cleaning, a hardware store, medical facilities, drug stores, hair and beauty salons, an eyewear center and so much more. We truly do have it all along with a food court which provides sumptuous meals and free Wi-Fi while you dine. Parking is plentiful and shopping times most convenient. Come to Cablewoods Mall. We're the mall that started it all. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar Nestled within Coco Palm, a boutique hotel in the heart of entertainment capital Rodney Bay Offers a truly unique experience with the best food, drinks and music Open 7am to 12 midnight daily for breakfast, lunch and dinner Tibanan specializes in authentic French Caribbean cuisine Delectable tropical cocktails And the best live entertainment on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays Tibanan also offers catering for weddings, special occasions and conferences for reservations, call 456-2800 or email reservations at coco-resorts.com. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar, where passion meets quality. 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 Tibanan Caribbean Bistro is now open for takeaway and delivery only. Place your orders by calling 456-2866 or 724-9309 or email orders at coco-resorts.com. Takeaway orders to be collected at hotel reception area and delivered fees vary on your location. The Bryce Water Tanks are of top quality and highly durable. It's a monolithic tank, meaning it's just one unit, which makes it stronger than the other tanks, which comes in two pieces. It also carries a health guard lining, which is FDA approved. And 
welcome back folks welcome back to keeping it real and the messages have been flying in no not on facebook i don't have time to monitor that what's up well, good night to bermuda got a message from bermuda it's high and dry and watching now i want to explain something here because I'm going to get into something in a while. And regarding this whole Cabot situation, and I want you to understand how things are done, the sequence of events. So I want to explain to you how a memo, you know a memo, memorandum, how a memo gets to cabinet the cabinet of ministers for their consideration and they can approve they can deny or they can send it back now with regard to a lease of the queen's chain now queen's chain high water mark and back further 182 feet or whatever it is you get the idea An application would come from the holder of the property which adjoins the Queen Chain. So if you buy some land at Cap Estate in Soufre in Viewfort, and your land borders a beach, whether it completely borders the beach or partially, you can apply for the Queen's Chain, to lease the Queen's Chain. If you're a developer, who has purchased land adjoining a beach, you can apply to the Crown, the government, to lease the Queen's Chain. Nothing unusual about that, folks. When you send your application in, it goes to the planning department. And the planning department now will prepare a memo and send it to the minister responsible for planning. That minister will review and he will sign off on it and send it to the clerk of cabinet who prepares. Cabinet is held every Monday. It's like a board meeting. And prepares the papers from the different ministers, the memos and whatever has to be discussed or considered or spoken about in cabinet. And every minister gets a package with what every other minister has coming in. So you prepare, just like Parliament. Every member of Parliament, opposition and the government, gets a package of papers. And my papers suddenly turned blue. <laughs> you get your package. So you know what's coming up. You know if you want to raise any questions or anything of the sort. So when it gets to cabinet, it's coming from the minister. It's coming from his ministry. And the minister responsible for planning is very much aware of what is going on. It's his ministry. He's aware. It's discussed. And then that is it. For that, it's decided whether it will be approved or not. So, I want to show you some documents. I want to show you some documents. You ready with the documents? I'm going to take our time because I have some explaining to do along the way so you understand the significance of these documents. I don't have all that I have on there, but it's enough for you to get the idea, and I have more of them here. So don't think there's no documents to talk about. So what I want you to do, you ready? Roll the first one. Now, folks, what I want you to do there now is to look to the right. You see that stamp, Government of St. Lucia? And you see the date there, the 27th of November, 2012. And if you look, you see... Emphytutic lease by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to Le Spore. 
St. Lucia Limited of. So the of says, this is what is being leased. A portion of the Queen's chain measuring 1.7 acres for a term of 99 years, folks. 99 years, nothing unusual. This is not unusual. I'm not here to say it is unusual. It is not. But if you look at the year of our Lord, 2012, you will see that it was during the rain of the SLP under Dr. Kenny Anthony. And who was the minister then? Stanley Felix. If my memory serves me correctly, was he? Stanley Felix. So, if you want to just scroll down a little, just for documenting purposes, just a little bit there. You see the block and parcel number, the sheet number, Tutkalti Bagai. Right? 25th, executed on 25th of October 2012. Next one. Now remember, lots of people have been making noise. Now, if we go to number 7 on the next sheet, look at what the condition is of the lease. To provide, maintain, and ensure public access to the beach bounded to the Queen's chain referred to in the first schedule. And the first schedule is referring to the land. So as part of the conditions of you leasing the queen's chain, you must, and it is stated there, it is put forth to which you sign, that you have to make access to the public available to the queen's chain. Let's go to the next one. It's getting interesting. Look at this there, folks. Emphytutic lease, that means over 10 years, between 10 and 99 years, it, by Queen Elizabeth II to Calabash Cove Resorts Limited. And I want you to look on the right side there. Well, let's scroll down first. What is it? Queen's Chain. No, no has to say Queen's Chain. For 50 years from the first day of November 2008 at $5,000 per annum. But let's go up. What's the date you see there? 20th of April 2009. That was during whose reign in government? The UWP? Stevenson King was the Prime Minister at that time. And who was the Minister of Planning? Richard Frederick. Richard Frederick was the Minister of Planning then. And for that memo to have gotten to Cabinet, to have been reviewed by Cabinet, in which Richard Frederick would have been sitting, and to have been approved by Cabinet, it must have come from the PS of his ministry, an application must have come from Calabash Cove. It must have gone to Richard Frederick to review, to sign off on it, and then sent to the clerk of cabinet to be put as an agenda item for the sitting of cabinet. Let's go to the next page of that one. What's it? Number two. Richard Frederick had to have seen those conditions to construct and maintain. It doesn't say just give them access, you know. It says to construct and maintain the public access to the Queen's chain. Let's go to the next one. Cap Maison. What's the date there? Go, let, let's go two back. Let's go two back. The page with the stamp. To um, the one. That's right. 20th of April, 2009. So let's go back to Cap Maison. November. About six months, you say? Six months later. 12th of November, 2009. Elizabeth II to Cap Maison Limited. A portion of the Queen's chain measuring 1.16 hectares. For a term of what? Bring it up. Some people might not have horizontal scrolls set up properly on the phone. Remember the days when things were below the screen? Bring it up for them to see. 25 years. 20, and go back up now. Let's see. What's the date again? 12th of November, 2009. Who was the Minister of Planning, Urban Renewal, Housing? Richard Frederick. Let's go to the next page. Roebuck Properties. What's the date? 21st, 27th of August, 2008. Who was the Minister of Planning then again? Who would have gotten it on his desk? 
who had to sign off on it, who was sitting in cabinet? The Minister of Planning then, Richard Frederick. Let's scroll down and see what, look, it's right there under the stamp. Two portions of Queen's Chain land. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see. For the condition to ensure that public access to, through, and along the Queen's Chain will be maintained. Let's go to the next one. 16th of March, 2000. That was during Dr. Kenny Anthony. Okay, just on Twekuma. Landslide. 16-1. Go down. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Yeah. Lease agreement between Antillian Development Corporation and who? The Queen, Her Majesty. Next page. We have another page. There we go. All the info is there. Number two. Queen's chain. Go down. Let them see. Go. That's it. That's the bottom of that page. Huh? At Anne's Cochon. And of course, the, the Cove lease was 75 years. You, you want to go back to that? I just want to make sure. Cap Maison is 75 years with an option. That's right. A term of 75 years. You see, it's the same thing. That screen up there is the same thing to me. Bring it up. A term of 75 years with an option to extend for a further 25 years under the hand of who was the planning minister? Richard Frederick in 2009. That's way. I give you the evidence, folks. I give you the evidence. That's it on those documents there? That's it. That's the way. So all the noise a lot of people making as if this is the first time under this administration, as if the whole world is coming to an end. It's not anything unusual. It has transcended. It has gone across all administrations. John Compton, Kenny Anthony, Stevenson King, Alan Chastney. Nothing wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that. Investors buying the land is not owned by the government that they're buying. The Queen's Chain is the Queen's Chain. But the land surrounding the Queen's Chain, around, abounding, next to Katouche, belongs to private individuals. And in this democratic and free society that we call St. Lucia, a private individual can sell land to a foreign developer. They can sell land to an individual. Remember alien land holding license? There are St. Lucians who own property in the United States. In fact, as a St. Lucian, without any sort of status in the United States, do you know that you can own property over there? Do you know that you can buy land in the U.S. without being a U.S. citizen or resident? Do you know that? Do you know that? The same thing was happening here before CIP, before uh, the, the, the what? Real estate project option to buy into CIP. You could buy a piece of land. You get an alien land holding license. It's nothing new. It's nothing new at all. And this talk that people have, oh, 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 oh patrimony, oh, 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 jasne, jasne, kafan, tout pays, at least, stop the nonsense. Hypocrites, hypocrites, stop it. Crocodile tears. Hypocrites, all of you hypocrites, you gonna pay the price someday. Someday. Hypocrites. St. Lucia is not self-sufficient. All the agriculture here is not self-sufficient for us. And the fact remains that whether you like it or not, St. Lucia must get some sort of investment, foreign direct investment, whether it be hotels, 
whether it be factories, whether it be whatever you want to cry about. St. Lucia is not self-sustaining. None! And you and none of the islands in the Caribbean are self-sustaining. Would you consider, let me ask you a question now. Would you consider that the United States is self-sustaining? Or that Canada is self-sustaining? But they all have foreign companies and investors in the U.S. What do you think all these foreign car companies are? What do you think all those chemical companies are? What do you think all the manufacturing companies are? You, they're all American? They're all Canadian? There's no German companies in the U.S.? All the banks in the U.S., you think they're all homegrown? You think they're all U.S. banks? Where do you think HSBC is from? You do your homework. Do your homework. So all of this bleeding hot nonsense about oh, oh foreigners come in and take our land these are legal transactions people selling their land oh there'll be no land for Lucians <laughs> no land for Lucians I mean, stop the nonsense how many of these same people you saw on that beach there on Sunday sold houses and property to foreigners how many of them how many of them have Airbnbs how many of them have properties? Listen to foreigners. Why they don't stop listening to foreigners and listen to locals only? Huh? A bunch of balderdash, a bunch of hypocrites, a bunch of bluffers. Malmenein. People several who cannot think better, who just look at things on the surface. But I want you to hear it from the minister himself of planning. The new planning minister, Herod Stanislaus, representative of Souffre Fonse Jacques. You ready? Roll it. Um, I want to reinstate today Reiterate. that the, the cabinet conclusion clearly states that Cabot development had a surplus on the parcels of land. It was already in existence. Those leases were issued to Capestate Limited in 1973 for 75 years. There is a 28-year grace period and time um, remaining on those leases. And basically, the cabinet conclusion is an extension of those leases to another 75 years. Secret Beach, Casaba Beach, Donkey Beach, none of those beaches will list to Cabot development. So, you know, in essence, Folks, I challenge anyone calling tonight to tell me which beach in St. Lucia does not have access by the public of St. Lucia. But you know, again, all of those days, they, 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 they're ready to cry, they're ready to bawl, shed their crocodile tears. What happened to our seabed? Where are y'all crying? They leased the beach. What happened to our seabed? What happened to Grindberg? Y'all should be crying and just as upset over there. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. It just occurred to me. That place where Earl Huntley was walking one morning with his lover, his lady, whatever it was. And he suddenly stepped in. Beverly Hillbilly's oil goo was right there on that beach. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. OMG. On that same beach. Can you, what the irony of it? It just occurred to me. Can you believe that? And all of this noise about the Queen's Chain, our beach, and people there jumping up and down. The beach is mine. I go bathe any time. You know that song from when? The 70s? The 80s? Wherever it was? That the beach should be free. The access should be free to all St. Lucians. And nobody, nobody should impede the access of St. Lucians to the beach. 
Nobody at all. How dare you? How dare you even think about it? But I have something to fukaneo sevel a little bit there tonight, folks. Something. Just think about it for a moment. Do you know that there is one beach in St. Lucia that you do not have free access to? I want you to think about it. Can you imagine which beach that is? I want you to think about it, folks. I want you to think about it. Ting, ting, ting. No answer. A beach under the control of the St. Lucia National Trust. The beach on Pigeon Point. Is it lawful for them to do that? And they have a fence. Remember all the talk about the fence, the quarantine fence on Raidway Beach to safeguard people, you know, in St. Lucia? There's a ball, and a, 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 if you want to call it, a spit. Wash your metela going out into the sea on a fence to prevent you from going around the wall onto the beach on Pigeon Point. But the trust charges you if you want to get to that beach. You ever hear any of these bleeding hearts make any noise about that? Should anybody challenge that one in court? Should the trust make access to the beach? As a matter of fact, the trust has blocked access to the beach. Something to think about, folks. Something to think about. But I'll leave that with you. And all the talk, you know, there's talk about, oh, what people trying to confuse you. Today I had this little back and forth thing online with someone. You know the same thing that I keep saying all the time. You provide them the evidence. You give them the information. You supply them with the facts. But they pretend that they don't understand. Oh, how about the plan on this? I said, listen, the only plan that has been approved or the part of the master plan is the golf course. That's it. The, the project, the Cabot project, is in phases. Phase one of the project is the golf course. That is the only part, folks, I have to tell you again, the golf course, which is currently being built, is the only part or the only phase, the first phase of the Cabot project which has received approval, and that entails clearing of the land piece, la bien wash, la bien tout calte bagay. There's, you don't plants and roots and trees growing in the middle of your golf course, so that has to be cleared off. The grass has to be planted, drainage has to be made, pl placed, landscaping has to be done. That is the only part. Read my lips. That is the only part. That is the only part that has been approved. Let me say it again. Read my lips again. The golf course is the only part that is available or that is approved at this point in time. The villas, the condos, whatever else is being built there, although there is agreement in principle. Say, oh yes, I believe that's a lovely project. Oh yes, I agree with that project. But all the phases of that project are subject to planning approval, which will then be forwarded to, and the planning approval is based on the guidelines, will then be forwarded to the cabinet of ministers for approval. That's how it works. That's what happened with the golf course. That's what's going to happen with phase two and phase three and whatever other phases there are. And then people are talking about, again, you see, again, because I've given it to you, keeping it real crew. I've given it to you and you wonder why, because there are nefarious reasons. The hypocrites, they have their reasons, their motives, their agenda, a bunch of kakaganda. The National Insurance Corporation is guided by the law, the NIC Act, the National Insurance Corporation Act. And there's also the National Insurance Corporation Investment Policy and Guidelines. 
people just can't do what they want. People just can't do what they want. So what I want to do is just share with, refresh your memory, and for those who are seeing for the first time, what the National Insurance Corporation's investment policy and guidelines say about money is the, and I see money is the contributions. Give me first page. There you are, folks. That's the first page I want you to see. What it is, right? Now, next page, that's the contents. Now, I want you to pay attention to the second highlighted menu item there, or contents item. The need to invest. That's the need to invest for the National Trust. Uh, not the National Trust, the National Insurance Corporation. So take us to the need to invest and what the guidelines say to the National Insurance Corporation about investing. Give it to me. You see what it says there, highlighted for you again? Money is in the fund, the National Provident Fund or the National Insurance Corporation Fund or the National Insurance Scheme Fund. It's a fund which are surplus to current needs. English is the very specific, folks. It's very specific, which are surplus to the current needs are to be invested in accordance with Tani Biausav, Section 21 of the 2000 Act, now consolidated into the blah, 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 National Insurance Corporation Act, Chapter 16.01. Scroll down for me, please, or scroll up. The need to invest, and it gives you up, up, the other way, the other up, that's right. It explains to you the rationale. Hold it there. Hold it there. It gives you the rationale for the National Insurance Corporation having to invest. Contributions, which means the money, the deductions from your salary, which go to the NIC, must be available to meet the needs, the various benefits, the various benefit claims, but in particular, pension obligations as they arise in the future. So the National Insurance Corporation must be able to pay your pension. So how does it guarantee? How does it make that happen? How does it make the money make little ones? However, listen to what they're saying, the rationale. The incidence of inflation, because the money you collected 10 years ago or 20 years ago does not have the same buying power now because things become more expensive. Medical care is more expensive. The cost of living goes up. So it has to make the money make little ones to keep up with inflation. And two, the expected decline over time in the ratio of active contributors per pensioner. So it means that the number of pensioners is going down. Well, we know already that the population of St. Lucia, if you look at the number of students going into school, is almost 50% of what it was 20, 30 years ago. So we're going to have less people paying into the NIC. And what he said, it is imperative that monies be invested to allow the NIC to, one, increase the level of benefits in payment to offset inflation, just like I said, and two, to supplement contributions to meet future pension obligations. Now let's go to the next one on how or where the NIC can invest those monies. Milila, you see the green there? There you go. A, hey, hey, let's go to two. That's section 21, which was referred to in the guidelines. Subject to any general or specific direction of cabinet, the surplus monies in the fund may be invested in any of the following. One, two, three, four, five ways. The acquisition, the acquisition and development of land. B, the purchase, construction, and rental of buildings. And I see Safe Tutsa. They can buy land. And C, what does C say? Loans. What it says? Loans. Say it again. Loans. Spell it for me. L-O-A-N-S. What does that spell, class? Loans. D, the NIC can invest in government bonds and securities because you get interest. And E, they can invest in shares and debentures in bodies corporate. What does that mean? They can invest in corporate companies. 
They can invest on Wall Street. They can buy stocks and bonds. Tutsakila. Okay, that's good for that. So the NIC, and there are certain people out there who love to threaten. They will take it to court. We'll take it to court. None of them taking it to court. Huh? What do you think is the reason for that? Because it's above board. It's in the law I showed you just a few seconds ago. That is the law that the Minister of Planning and the Cabinet of Ministers can lease the Queen's chain. The evidence is there to show that Richard Frederick, being the Minister of Planning when he was in government, did the very same thing. 99-year lease, 75-year lease, 50-year lease. The government before him under Kenny Anthony did the same thing. This government has done the same thing because there is a need for investment. There's a need for employment. There's a need to enhance the economy in St. Lucia. What is the problem? And in all of those leases of the Queen's chain, full access is still available. Can you go on Ridley Beach? Can you? Can you go on Coconut Bay Beach? Can you go on Chastney Beach? Can you go VG Beach? Everywhere I've mentioned there are hotels there. Can you go Casaba? Madri has a lease of the Queen's Chain there. Is access available there? Yes. So what is all the hullabaloo? What is all the hullabaloo? But then again, you see the hypocrites? Hypocrite. Yokadi. Uh-oh. Last week I had some photos of that hill. Can you pull that up for me, please? Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Booking the guys tonight. You know, in fact, in fact, whilst you're working on that, put up. We'll wait for it. You know the hypocrisy of those same, the usual suspects. You see in the faces all the time. You hear in them, you know where they are. They have no shame. They put themselves out there. There were three of them, I think. A far, medium, and zoom in. You know, Pamele, good to go. Good. Yeah, that's this, I mean, this place is number one, you know. We're going back in time. We're taking things. Brap, Mili. Give me the first shot. Is that it? I'm not seeing it there. That's not it yet. Next one. There we go. On the right side and in the middle there. And give me the close-up. I want the close-up. The close-ups I want. There we go. Those of you who know that, just to the northwest of Royston, you see that monstrosity? The whole hill? Eaten alive? Hold it right there. See that hill? Oh, I even forgot the name of that hill. But... It's up north. I'll get the name for you. No, no. No. That's not the name. Look at that, folks. Half of the hill eat up. Where are the people? Where are those who so concerned about the flora and fauna of St. Lucia? So concerned about the little lizards? So concerned about the migrating birds that sleep in the trees up there? What happened there? What is a fortress that was being built there? The earth is bare. What was going on there? Did they have planning approval to do that? What about the little, the little chicken hawks and the little mice and creatures that reside there? Where was the concern? The hypocrites? The hypocrites, man. But I have something to show you. I want to show you the hypocrisy even more. Give me the satellite. Not that one, Mr. The satellite map. Now, I've taken the liberty. On the left there, you see this line going diagonally across there. That is the north of St. Lucia. On the left is the very hill that I just showed you with the monstrosity there. And on the right is in the middle of the Cabot property. 
just about the narrowest point on St. Lucia to the north. Guess what the distance is? What's the distance there at the bottom? Huh? What's that? He passed some way. <laughs> you can't even see it. What's that, folks? You can see it. What's it? Zoom in on that for them. 3.03 kilometers. 1.8 miles away from Cabot. Where people concern about the cactus. Where they concern about the environment. Where they concern about access to the beach. Where they concern about the grass. Where they concern about the insects. Where they concern about the, the birds and, and, and the, the settlements. Tut kalte bagay and not darn it. Zoom out on that. Less than two miles away, one point something miles away, to the west of that. On the east is the Atlantic Ocean. On the west is the Caribbean Sea. Not one peep, not one word, oh yeah, about the disaster. Show that photo again, the, the, the close-up of, of that hill there. For 10, 12 years, that has been exposed to the elements. Watch Katobela. The earth is bare. Nothing is growing there again. But then these same actors, a lot of political actors too, are concerned about scraping off the earth for the golf course, how the earth is bare. And what the darn it has been going on over there for 12 years, that place has been bare. Not one peep from those so-and-sos. And you all want people to take you all serious. You all have no shame. Huh? No shame. But you're concerned about the environment. You're concerned about cactus. You're concerned about the detrimental effects. And one of the biggest... Well, you know what? Let me leave Jimmy alone. Because his balcony is right across from there. He can see it every day. Right? Right in front of his face. To the right side of that day. That's where his balcony is. Right? Right by the roundabout there at Capeste. You can see it without impediment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But these people out there, I'm not talking about Jimmy. Before you'll say, I say things about Jimmy and he get more vexed with me. But these people out there, you pack at the oh, yeah. one mile away, within view. All of them, when they, they gone all on top the hill, two part two, donkey, beach, and lay. On their way to Kasaba. Because the way you have to get to Kasaba is to pass Royalton now. On the right, on the left, you could see it. You see any of them going over there and hugging trees? <sighs> and then, we'll, we'll take a break. And come back. I'll leave you to digest on that. And we're going to go to your calls and a few thoughts and um, quick statements. Right back after the break. Avoid the congestion and traffic associated with Cashew City and Rodney Bay Shopping and come to Gamewoods Mall. We have everything you'd possibly want, from a sprawling supermarket to a complete furniture store. From your choice of elegant boutiques to professional photography, dry cleaning, a hardware store, medical facilities, drug stores, hair and beauty salons, an eyewear center and so much more. We truly do have it all along with a food court which provides sumptuous meals and free Wi-Fi while you dine. Parking is plentiful and shopping times most convenient. Come to Cablewoods Mall. We're the mall that started it all. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar Nestled within Coco Palm, a boutique hotel in the heart of entertainment capital Rodney Bay Offers a truly unique experience with the best food, drinks and music Open 7am to 12 midnight daily for breakfast, lunch and dinner Tibanan specializes in authentic French Caribbean cuisine Delectable tropical cocktails And the best live entertainment on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays
is Cibanan also offers catering for weddings, special occasions, and conferences. For reservations, call 456-2800 or email reservations at coco-resorts.com. Cibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar, where passion meets quality. Quality. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro is now open for takeaway and delivery only. Place your orders by calling 456-2866 or 724-9309 or email orders at coco-resorts.com. Takeaway orders to be collected at hotel reception area and delivery fees vary on your location. The Bryce Water Tanks are of top quality and highly durable. The monolithic tank, meaning it's just one unit, which makes it stronger than the other tanks, which comes in two pieces. It also carries a health guard lining, which is FDA approved. Bryce and Company, built for living, built for life. Back, folks welcome back to the final segment we're gonna open up the lines in just a second maybe we might go over time a little bit an hour guys we have an hour you know earlier I was talking about Philip J. Pierre and Ernest Hillier and the questions that need to be answered which were brought into everybody's consciousness by Ernest Hillier with the statement that he made to the press about two weeks ago with regard to an account with Jufali and all of that sort of thing. Uh, well, I don't know. That's how I get it. And that the account was being audited and all of that. Uh, what's the story with that? The people of St. Lucia want to know. But all this back and forth, honestly, just saying this. Where are the journalists to ask the tough questions? Where are they? Where are the political actors? Where are they? I'm, I'm calling out tonight. I'm calling out people who do all the reporting. I'm calling out the reporters, whatever they are, reporters, journalists, whatever. Those who read the news. I'm calling them. I'm calling Stanley Lucien, Miguel Fevrier, Janeka Simon. Trisha Lionel, all of you that want to do expose, eh? all the others. I'm calling on you to ask the pertinent questions about this to Onesile. He brought it up. Where are you all with the answers? These are pertinent questions. All you all doing is just running back and forth. This one say that, UWP say this, SLP say this. I need some journalism in this place. Read the writer's Handbook on journalism if you don't know what to do. If you don't know. If you don't have ideas. I need the story about that Range Rover. I need to know what happened in England. In London. In the name of St. Lucia. I need to know. 450-0777. And I want to know which St. Lucian... Which St. Lucian, which Malewe, let me ride that bucket tonight. Let me ride that horse. Which Malewe could have had an entry pending at customs for four and a half years, almost five years, if not just about, and have not satisfied the requirement to enter the relevant documents? And you're still there? Which St. Lucian could do that? Oh my gosh, man. But I want you to put up now the COVID map there. St. Lucia's performance. We have a call? Okay. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Williams. Good night, sir. Let's keep it real. Yeah, um, Mr. Williams, I, there's a bitch I frequent that married to. You what? Marisol Beach. You say what about Marisol Beach? 
I frequent. Oh, you frequent Marisol Beach. Okay. Just across the road, it's private property. So what if these people decide they want to sell the property to a developer? Will that be selling patrimony? Well, it's private property. And if they want to sell it to a developer, the developer has to get approval from government for whatever developer. Yes, I understand. And yeah. if all that is granted, approval is granted. Okay. So somebody going to come and demonstrate to the owner of the private property, they cannot sell the land to whoever they want? There you go, caller. And that is, you know, that is exactly a point that I wanted to make. The sale of the Cabot land or the Raffles land or the Cap Estate land is a private transaction. Because Mr. Williams, that property is not like other beach like where you have a lot of cactus and cuppage. It's pasture and there's not much excavation. It's a nice sloping down to the beach. So if the people decide to sell their land, somebody will go and tell them, they cannot sell the land, they sell in patrimony or other nonsense. Well, 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 caller, I'm glad that you have come to that conclusion, the nonsensical argument. So, in essence, what these people are saying is, you can only sell to St. Lucians. That's basically no, but that, what it is. I, I just don't understand some people. And I find it strange that property is still there. And it, it has not been developed. For so long, that's right. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you for keeping it real, caller. And that is exactly the point, folks. That is exactly the point. That private individuals are free to sell their property. And so the law allows a foreigner to purchase land here once you satisfy the conditions. 450, we have another call. Good night. Let's keep it real. Good night, Norbert. Good night. Good night. How are you doing? I'm on fire. How are you? Good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Listen to this. Yes. It's a very good thing. You know, all this thing that is happening, all this thing that is going on, I like it. And I, you know why I like it? If these things were not happening, it would not give you the opportunity to educate St. Lucians along the line you are educating us there now. Mm -hmm. Because the reality of the situation, most of the people, apart from those who have been involved in government, don't understand this thing that is going on at all. They don't even realize they are being manipulated that is into right, political st stooges. Political stooges, that's what's happening there. And they don't even realize that's what's happening. Because these guys that came out at the forefront saying all those things, those very same people, as you are pointing out, are always okay of what is happening in government. That is right. But they're pretending they don't know, while the people that are so ignorant, they don't realize that these guys are only using them for their own purpose. Hoodwinking them. You understand? Yes. And that is why I like what it is, because we really need, people really need to be educated in this country. Like you pointed out, St. Lucians don't think. All they do is swallow whatever it is. They just drop in them. They take it, they run with it, and they don't look for where this thing is coming from, what is the truth, what is not the truth. Because I support that party, something throw out in the air, I just take it and I make a mileage with it. That's okay. Right. That's right. Paul. So I, I, I really enjoy the I'm really enjoying the pro Oh I got cut off there. Thank you, Vala. Thank you for keeping it real. Very good points you were making there. But you see, folks, <clears throat> you see, that is the problem. That is the problem we have. The manipulation of people who don't know better by people who do know better. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good night, you're on the air. Hey, yes, sir. Um, the last caller talked about selling land. Uh, 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 sorry. Go ahead, caller. He talked about selling land, uh, private property bought in the Queen's Chain, but he never talked about is there access at the moment for locals, right? So if... Uh, access, access to where? Access. access to where? The Marisol land he was talking there, about. There is, to the beach there, there is access. Right, right. So 
So if someone else, a foreigner, were to come and buy that land and he decide to block it or fence it and make it difficult for the locals that are accessing the land right now to make use of it, what would you say about that? You never challenged him about well, that. Well, well, well caller, what, what he was alluding to and what I showed earlier in the lease of the Queen's Chain is that access, one of the conditions is that access to the beach has to be provided to the public. Correct. Correct. So let me go on about that because I know I've maybe accessed all these beaches here more than most people have. I'll start from Malabar. I grew up around La Clary area. Right. I recognize the voice. <laughs> I saw so, you in the video too. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I'll tell you. I, look, I, you were a kid I really liked at school. I'll tell you that. I've always lied to you. What, and, what? I, I know, I know. Let's, let's we go, let's really go. Well. we have but, but tight on the time. Me, but you've made me really upset about some things you've said. What's that? Tell me. Okay. So you talk about all these beaches, and it's correct. All these um, uh, leases they've given to all these um, hotels. That's right. Successive governments have done it. It's wrong. It's been wrong the whole time, and it's wrong now. But why but, do you say it's wrong? That's the question. Because why would you lease the Queen's Chain? I mean, I've gone, I've traveled everywhere. Brazil, the hotels are built beyond the beaches, right? So locals and tourists mingle. They use the beach equally. You don't separate. You don't put... Okay, I worked at okay. Club Med. I worked at Club Med. Right, they had the going. fence all the way in the ocean so that the locals couldn't come onto the beach. I've gone for, I've worked at Rendezvous, the same. I grew up in, like, as I said, all the people in the, the, the kids in La Clary, everybody used that beach, riding waves, body surfing, as you know. Now, there is no waves. Why? Because they put rocks into the water, so they've cut the waves off. Nobody is on Alba Beach anymore. Go up the beach. My, my grandpa was a fisherman. Right next to uh, Mr. Chastney's house, his boats were docked there. All the boats from these days were docked there. There is no more of that. Since Sandals came in, not one family has been on that beach. You have 30 seconds, caller. 30 seconds. Right. So I could go on and on to all the beaches. So that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Chasm bar. This is... What, 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 back, what was the back? What, what broke the back for you? Because all the beaches have been taken, and I will take it. But what do you mean the beaches are taken? But you just okay. said that you have access. Oh, but, no, but, no, but, wait, wait. Okay. You said we have access to the beaches. Yeah. I, and Joshua is called keeping it real. Yeah. I'd like to take you to all these beaches I've talked about, from Malabar to all the tippy top north, and I will show you how it's not accessible. Wait, just I tell me. You don't have to show me. Just tell me. What is impeding your I, access? Oh, I want to show you. You have to document it. Because you don't just sit there and tell me it's accessible. But, so if you have so a com caller, let me tell you something. If you mm -hmm. have a complaint about that, and I know that you understand me very well, we relate. If you have a complaint about that, and you know that the law requires, just like any other law which requires compliance, Right. If you know that there is a problem, then you have to bring it to the attention of the relevant authorities. Plain and simple. Because as you see there, in all of these agreements, there's a requirement to make the beach accessible to the public. Uh, okay. There we go. So, so, so if, to... if any singular entity is not complying with the lease that was received from the Crown, then there are actions that can be taken. Okay. Paula, we're out of time for, for this call. Fair, we can take it on... Um, we can take this on off air. Well, fair enough, but I just okay. want to mention one thing quickly. Yes, quickly. Kazumba, Kazumba, you said you could go to any beach right now, which is wrong. I can't access Secret Beach and I can't access... Okay, okay, Long okay, beach. hold on a second. One second, caller, one second, one second. There is construction going on. The, the Queen's Chain has on, no caller. construction. Hold on, hold on, There shouldn't be construction on the Queen's Chain. Hold, hold on, caller, hold on. There is construction going on because the first phase of the project has been approved. It is, if, for all intents and purposes, a construction site. It, it, it is clear that there's heavy equipment and that there are liability issues for the construction site. When there is a construction site, you have to limit access. 
The intention is not to limit access to the beach, but for safety reasons. I mean, this is easy to understand. Even if access is not available right now, the intent is for safety. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you very much for keeping it real. We can continue that later. But, but folks, I appreciate the comments of this last caller. And of course, everybody is entitled to the enjoyment of the beach. And the law, according to what it says, requires that in those agreements, it requires that the owner of the property, the owner of the lease, has to provide access to the Queen's chain. And that will be done. The other aspects of Cabot have not been finalized. And I guarantee you that in there will be the requirement, as you have seen in all the other leases, through all the administrations, access to the Queen's chain. And as I said before, St. Lucia has to take direct investment. If that was not the case, all of these people who were not at the hotels, where would they be? And all of those people who had to suffer because of COVID and the measures that were put in place around the world, it's because of those investments. Let's go to the chart because some people don't want to see the reality of it. Let's remove that thumb. Here we go. All throughout the region. And look at St. Lucia's performance. Look at St. Lucia's performance. Per 10,000 population. St. Lucia the lowest. Was it a miracle or was it something we did? Was it our CMO, the Minister of Health, our Prime Minister, our Cabinet of Ministers, and the people of St. Lucia, by and large, the majority of them, complying with the protocols that has St. Lucia number one in the region. But you know, true to form, there are those out there, I mean, it's, it's a shame that they try to malmene these statistics and tell you where it's from. I mean, all of those numbers are verifiable. You don't need to be any rocket scientist. It's all out there. But all of a sudden, now this one comes out if St. Lucia was at the top, oh, you bet your bottom dollar they would believe this. But St. Lucia is the least, performed the best. Remember the statement by Philip J. Pierre? St. Lucia is the worst prepared. But St. Lucia is doing the best. And remember Ernest Hillel's comment when this was brought to his attention? Well, 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 they, they were the worst prepared, but they did things properly after that, after they were, they were challenged on, on what they were doing. Just cannot accept... St. Lucia, doing good. You can take that down. Put up the number. We'll take one more call. Just, I mean, it's like it's a pain to give kudos to say St. Lucia did well. Your country, the land of your birth, wheresoever you may roam, love or love your island home and right here, you hate your country, self-hate. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hey, Norbert. Good night. Norbert, I am St. Lucian. I always say I was born at Victoria Hospital. I am St. Lucian and I love my country. And I will defend to the end the right of St. Lucian to access the beach. So I think this whole Cabot land issue, the uh, Casabar Beach, is a very, very serious issue and one dear to my heart. And now that I resent the bastardization and the hijacking of this very, very serious issue that, is right. that we should not be politicizing. I resent the, this issue being hijacked by political opportunists, political players, and so on. I'm not saying everybody who is passionate about this, this issue are political opportunities. Not at, not at all. I am passionate, and I, and I, I realize that lots of St. Lucians are rightfully passionate about this issue. What I cannot stand and what I stand against is the lies or the lies, the manipulation of the truth and the propaganda by those people who are seeking to make this a political issue. That's right. I stand against that because the, our beach access is something that we should never be playing a political football with. We need to speak facts and we need to speak the truth about this issue. I want to speak about Queen's Chain, first of all, Norbert. Yes, yes. No, but when I lived in St. Lucia, I, was, I had my own real estate company, so I know a bit about the issue of You had Queen's your own Chain. what company? 
real estate. Okay. Yeah. So the the leasing of Queen Street is nothing new to Saint Lucia. It's not new. This has always happened. And it's not just hotels and it's not just beach land. The Queen Street was on the original parcel of Saint Lucia. Do you know that there are actually lots, residential lots in Cap Estate that do not have beachfront access. They have cliffs. Yeah. They bought they 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 are bounded. They they are on the boundary of Saint Lucia, but it's not beach. It's cliffs. Yeah. But because it is the the, the edges of Saint Lucia, basically, for want of a better word, there are uh, there's Queen Street on those lots that are on cliffs. So beach Queen Street does not necessarily mean beach. It is the external boundaries of Saint Lucia. So there are lots of residential lots in Cafe State where people own part of the land and they're actually leasing part of the Queen Street land there. No, but most of the hotels in Saint Lucia, the exception being Sandals Grand and Landings because they are on reclaimed land and there's no Queen Shane there. But most of the hotels in St. Lucia are have leases of Queen Shane. That is nothing new. So when, you, when I see people playing quality to this issue as if Queen, the lease of Queen Shane is something new, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's been done by all governments throughout. But no, but there's nothing wrong with the lease of Queen Shane too. There's nothing wrong with it. A lease of Queen Shane does not impede public beach access. It does not. I wonder, no, where, I wonder where all of these barbecues and everything on the beach are taking place. Okay. All right. Now, but think about it. You are an, you're an investor. Let's say you're looking to, to build a hotel somewhere. Obviously, you're looking for a return on your investment. Mm -hmm. You're thinking you're, the world is your, is your, is your, your marketplace. St. Lucia, like, I love St. Lucia, but we love to think that we... The, the sun rises and sets on St. Lucia. It does not. We really and truly have no competitive advantage outside right. of any other tropical destination. That is right. Not only in the Caribbean, no, but the world the over. World. That's right. We are Look competing at the with Look islands at and else countries we're competing in the with. Pacific that has crystal clear waters. Yeah. We probably don't think it, but perhaps more beautiful than St. Lucia. Cheap to invest in lower cost of of, of um services. lower cost of That's input right. like services labor and electricity so they, they have established airlift electricity so there are countries that are more positioned to attract that foreign investment than us in St. Lucia. so why should an investor let's say you have a million dollars or five million dollars or 20 million whatever to invest in a resort let's say you want to do a resort the world is your oyster. You have countries all over the world, not just small countries. Big and large countries are competing for the same funds of foreign investment. That is the right. same funds. Caller, you're so, making yeah, my closing point. Wait, no, but wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I have, I have a few more points to make. I, I, I'm going to use up a few more minutes on your okay, show. Okay, sure, I sure. Used, I'll give you two more minutes. Is that okay? Idea. Many more? Two more. No, no, but I need about four more. Four more, please. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. Since, since you're such a good caller... No, but this is an issue close to my heart. I don't want to waste a lot of time. Go ahead. But go I ahead. want to correct the misinformation out there, right? We compete in a very competitive marketplace for foreign direct investment, right? When, you, when people say hotels should be built across the road, okay, it's done in New York, it's done in, 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 in Miami, it's done here, it's done in Brazil, whatever. We are a tropical island, right? Hotels need want to be built on the beach so that access, uh, people have access to the beach. Just like they're done in Thailand, in the Philippines, everywhere else. That is who we are competing with. When investors come in to uh, look for uh, a place to invest, we want to tell them, no, go across the street. You think they're going to come and invest in St. Lucia? Folks, we need the employment. You know, what is our competitive advantage? Caller, you that, that we... caller you're making a very important point in all of this. And a lot of people out there seem to forget that St. Lucia is competing with the rest of the world. This is not the 60s or the 50s or anything of the sort. No, but I, I think sometimes and I'm, I have to shake my head at, at um, St. Lucia and uh, the, the, how limited we are in our thinking. Anyway, let me go on to another point about NIC. Mm -hmm. NIC is a pension fund, Norbert. Yes. And pension funds every single place in the world, yes. for the, in, just as you read, for NIC to be able to make money to pay its pensioners when their pensions become due, they have to invest that money. Otherwise, the money does not keep up with the cost of inflation. That's right. No, but if I have 20 bucks and I leave it in a savings account now and I withdraw it, 
if it if the interest it, it earns does not keep up with the with inflation, I am actually losing money. Exactly. I'm actually so NIC like every other pension fund in the world, the Canadian pension fund, the you know where it's called the value where, of your money. The value, you have yeah. to invest, and these companies, these pension funds, invest in the stock market in second that. That like any other um, funds or any other portfolio of, of, of funds, etc. And hopefully over time, the, mon the money grow. Like anything else, it's volatile. The stock market goes up and down. But without realizing it, oh, say in Lucian, with NIC funds, I invest in golf courses, golf resorts, hotels, clubs, all uh, startup businesses, all kinds of businesses all around the world. The only returns we get from those funds are, is from the interest on our investment. Tell me, no, but what is wrong? People talk about um, and I think giving away our money or giving away our land. What rubbish is that? That's absolute How nonsense. I don't know what's wrong. Our... That is insulting people's intelligence. No, but, but it's a sad thing that so many St. Lucians do not understand. And they, they believe do it. not understand. And they just repeat the garbage talking points. That's right. That's what, that's that's right. what irks me. The, the ignorance and the, just the lack of understanding and the lack of research, right? No, but so... We are still in NIC money is being invested in companies all around the world that Why not, not does not benefit St. Lucia at all. What exactly. is wrong with NIC investing in a company like Cabot, right, through a loan, an interest bearing loan, where exactly. that both funds are invested and the in security Lucia. is triple the value of I, the loan? I, I, I'll get to that, but the, the, the money is invested in St. Lucia, creating number one employment, long term employment employment through construction, economic activity, the purchase of goods and services locally in the economy. As far as I am concerned, that is a far better investment than investing Abs in bravo, a golf Paula. course bravo. somewhere bravo. around, somewhere in, 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 in Timbuktu. That's right. Where our money is invested in any way. No, but there is no, there is no, little or no risk on this investment. NIC is holding three times the value of the loan as security. Even in the worst case scenario, if Cabot cannot pay that loan, we, and I think the, the land goes back to NIC, and I think it's still a loan below market price as Absolutely. residential lot to St. Lucia and still make a profit. Exactly. As far as I'm concerned, this is a win, win, win thing Absolutely. Um, for St. Lucia. Absolutely. No, but anyway, I have more points to make, but I'll, I, I know I have to, to wrap up. So. Right. Point. Okay, thank you very much, Carla. Thank, thank you, for, you, Norbert. Have a good night. Thank you for keeping it real. Absolutely. Thank you. Folks, who could have said it better? And that's exactly what I've been saying to you all there. Well summarized. I, I, could, I should have just packed up my stuff and left. That's how I was going to summarize tonight. That St. Lucia doesn't... Do we feel that St. Lucia is unique in the world that we can walk away from all of these investments and say, okay, hunky-dory? But, but you see, the thing that is even more egregious and it pains the heart is that the people who are pushing this nonsense, they know better. They know better. They absolutely know better. The only conclusion that you can come to the only conclusion that you can come to is that it's just malicious politicking. That's all it is, malicious politicking. Folks, I believe, well, you have to ask yourself, why do investors come here? Just like the caller was saying, why they come here? They have the option of the world. And to make it seem like, who's, you know that, that clip that was played last week, the interview of the Canadian visitor. Oh, he wouldn't come here for golf. I think Cabot spending $150, $250 million is not going to have all the experts. He's not going to have all the market analysis. They're not going to look at the return on investment. They're not going to look at all of that before they go invest that money. You think they're not doing that? When you go buy a car, for $50,000 or whatever it is, or when you go buy some food by the market, you have to wonder, boy, can I afford that? You know, is it worth it? You think when somebody's spending $100 million, they don't do it? They don't spend thousands and tens of thousands 
of dollars on the experts to analyze the situation for them first? You don't think so? Oh, I wouldn't come here for golf. That's not an authentic St. Lucian experience. That's a fair enough statement. But there are people who come to St. Lucia for scuba diving. They won't play golf. But there are those who will come for golf. It's an attraction to the services that you offer. There are those who will come here to buy a condo that's close to a golf course. There are those who will come here to Nature Trail. Those who will come for the Sulphur Springs. Those who will come just to go to the market and to visit the sites. They don't care about golf. There are those who are going to come here to get married. There are those who come here for jazz. Those who will come for carnival. So it's not only one thing. St. Lucia's portfolio, St. Lucia's offering is varied to attract more people to the island for the economy. And isn't it these same people who say that we cannot put all our eggs in one basket? Well, hello. Folks, I want you to maybe watch this video again. It's online. It's on Facebook, on the Keeping It Real page. It's in One Lucian. It's on the Hot 7 page. Or you can watch the replay on Sunday at 4 p.m. That's when the replay of this show is. Very important that you understand this situation properly because a lot of fake info has been put out there, a lot of lies. And the underlying tone in all of it, the motive behind all of it, is dirty, nasty politics. I say so without reservation. Dirty politics. And there are people who would rather see or don't care if they see the country go down, that people lose jobs for lack of investment just to satisfy their political ambitions and motives. Very sad. But one parting little video clip for you before I say goodnight on this hot show of keeping this hot episode. Roll the last clip. Tell Richard Frederick to stay in his section. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you very much. Once again, all of those, all those of you in the diaspora, in the UK, everywhere, all around St. Lucia. Thank you so much. I'm Norbert Williams. Good night. <laughs>